The relationships that streamers have with the games they play are a little different than, say, yours or mine. There are individuals that fit certain games like a glove. I'm feeling an imposter on. I've been waiting for this moment my whole life, Toast. I've been waiting. I've been waiting so long for this. But there are also streamers whose identities have been transformed by the games they've discovered, to the point where the code and the person almost become one inseparable entity. Bro, look at that. It looks just like me! Of course, becoming synonymous with a single game can come with a lot of perks, like big fat paychecks, larger than life fame, and a rabid following that will watch you on your good days and your bad ones. I don't get nothing! I don't get nothing! Nothing! I get nothing! But as grateful as these personalities might be to the games that helped launch their stardom, playing the same thing over and over again can become tiresome. And if not addressed, that frustration can quickly develop into resentment. God, Gaben, you suck so much at making video games. It hurts me, bro. So the obvious solution to saving one's sanity is to mix things up and play something else. And the results for doing just that can really vary. They can be good. 30 bomb? That's baby. <laughs> Maybe Barstool was right, dude. Maybe I am a top three Warzone player. They can also be hilarious. Oh, it's a duck. It's a fucking duck. Or they can be downright ugly. Cat, Blitz, quit the game. You're trash. You're awful. You're so stupid. But without a doubt, the biggest challenge that streamers face when looking to freshen things up a little bit is the pushback they get from their audience. I can't tell you how many times, every time I kind of make a major switch, started to play Counter-Strike, people came in, dude, you're not playing Call of Duty anymore? <laughs> Whatever, bro. Okay, dude, that game made you. This stream's gonna die now. Counter-Strike to Overwatch. Dude, that game made you, dude. Overwatch to Fortnite. Dude, that game made you. Fortnite back to Call of Duty. Dude, that game made you. And now here we are playing some Valorant. Dude! However, in the case of the ever badass and munition, streaming has never been about bowing to the demands of anyone or imprisoning herself in the polygonal walls of a single game. It's been about what it should always be about, having fun. This guy was typing a He was typing a message. While most of us were introduced to Anne through her exploits playing Rainbow Six Siege, over the last few years, she's been quietly carving out her own path, playing and doing whatever the hell she wants. Go. Oh! Wow. Oh! So how is it that this no-nonsense OG content creator has been able to effortlessly direct her stream wherever she wants it to go without fear of the consequences. What inspired her to step away from the game that, for a while, defined her? And better yet, how did she become one of the biggest and most beloved female streamers on a notoriously toxic platform? Talk Where does one send an application to be your boyfriend? Oh, right here. It's right here. Okay, so before we dive into Anne's story, I'm just gonna ask that you please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications. Also, be sure to check out our YouTube Shorts channel. From what I hear, there's this Dimitri guy with some pretty sick clips up there. All right, so if there is one thing you can confidently say about Anne Munition, it's that she isn't afraid of expressing herself. Whether that's in-game. I can't time. swim any faster than this that. Time. I am talking to you. I'm gonna burn your boat. Oh. Oh god, I didn't mean to drop it. Get off the boat, get off the boat, get off the boat, get off the boat. In real life... It happens all the time where, like, dudes will crash their car in PUBG, and then their whole community is just like, oh, driving like a woman. I'm like, why is it my fault that this guy can't drive a car? <laughs> <laughs> you know. 
through singing her heart out. I'm becoming this, all I want to do is be more like me and be less like you. Or interacting with chat. If I was a woman, I would get one million viewers. What? I have 1,400 viewers right now. Also, maybe it's because I'm playing piano and you have no actual talents. Oh! And while most of us might look at Anne and think she's this hardened, unfazable Twitch veteran, the truth is that she's not as tough as she might appear. And then as I updated it, and of course, you know, every day, <gasps> I'm this game, I don't like that. And my PC froze, so I had to restart my PC. So. All joking aside, Anne's journey as a gamer began with her siblings playing Super Nintendo games like Super Mario World and Paperboy. But as she grew older, Anne was drawn to FPS games like GoldenEye, Turok, and eventually Halo. But gaming wasn't Anne's only interest. She got into cars, music, event photography, and graphic design, which eventually she turned into a full-time career. It was around then that Anne started dipping her toes into content creation on YouTube, where she uploaded reaction videos as she played through scary games like Outlast. But once Anne discovered her interest in live streaming, she decided to try it out for herself. It just seemed like it was something really fun and like a cool way to connect with people. So I started doing it in my free time after work. And from there, it just kind of took off. After making the jump from console to PC, Anne officially launched her Twitch channel in June of 2014. Now, in the beginning, she streamed games like Minecraft, but being that she was still finding her footing on the platform, she wasn't really tied to any specific game. And she was just having fun. Yay, doors open. We did. <gasps> oh! <laughs> In the span of one year, Anne's Twitch channel had grown to the point that she was able to turn it from a hobby into her new career. Now, a choice to stream full time came with some pretty big perks, but as Anne began to realize, it also came at a cost socially. I was willing to sacrifice things like hanging out with my friends all the time or going out all the time, or, you know, just generally having more free time in order to commit to growing my channel. Of course, there were also challenges she faced that went beyond time constraints. You see, as Anne became more comfortable in her new streamer life, she also began to pull the curtain back on her personal one. And while most of her viewers openly embraced her for who she was, as a multiracial, openly gay female streamer, she has, unfortunately, had to deal with her fair share of bullshit. I think it depends on what I'm wearing, too. <laughs> wearing like, yeah, like this, the, or like a snapback, and then they're like, lesbian alert. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, I, could, I can see that. I mean, Brandon. Swamp creatures in chat aside, streaming wasn't all that bad for Anne. Her genuine enjoyment of what she was doing drew more and more people to her stream. And in 2017, she was approached by Ubisoft with a sponsorship to play Rainbow Six Siege. I still have the email where I told them I don't know how to play this game and I will probably be terrible at it. And they were like, that's fine, you know, we just want to showcase people of all different skill levels. So it's totally cool if you're brand new. And I think I tried to kill the hostage like a bunch of times. I mean, not on purpose, but um, I was just really bad at the game. In spite of her initial reservations, as Anne spent more time playing and getting better at Siege, she began to establish herself as one of the game's most recognizable and watchable personalities, thanks in large part to her sense of humor, I just hacked my way into the objective. <laughs> what? And her ability to clap cheeks. One friendly remaining. What? Oh, what? One on four remaining. Protect the biohazard container. Beautiful individual. Oh, 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 yes! 
Oh my god! Someone f***ing hire me to be a pro siege player! After years of playing whatever she wanted, Anne had finally found her bread and butter game. One that she not only loved, but was able to consistently attract eyeballs to her stream with. And her increasing popularity playing Siege led to more opportunities for Anne. She found herself rubbing elbows with celebrities, got sponsored by Red Bull, made appearances on the news, and was even honored with her very own in-game charm. But as charmed as Siege was by Anne, she found herself growing increasingly exasperated by certain aspects of the game. It can be kind of frustrating. I think the more success you have on Twitch, the more you have to deal with people who are stream sniping and people who are actively trying to make the game not fun for you. And that's gotten way worse in the past few months, especially I've noticed a lot more people who are stream sniping and it can be very, very difficult to want to play Siege when you know that that's going to happen every day. On top of all that, if her pre-Siege days were anything to go by, Anne never wanted to be a slave to any single title. And as scary as abandoning your channel's primary draw can be, Anne decided to go for it, diving headfirst into the strange and wonderful world of other games. And fortunately, her fans were down for the ride. Oh, it's getting faster. I can feel it. <gasps> oh, no. I fell. It gets so fast. No, 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 no. Pick up the gun. Pick up the gun, you idiot. No, no. Put, put. Hang on. 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 Okay, we're good. Oh, oh that's barbed wire. <laughs> I was I was trying to copy what you were doing and I was like sidestepping. Team. Knocked one. Nice. I'm going off that. I have a Kraber as well. We should push in. Alexei a bomb. Of course, Anne has always favored the art of clicking heads. So you're likely to see her still indulging that in Escape from Tarkov. But part of her stream's appeal is that you never quite know what you're gonna be watching. And honestly, that's the best part about Anne's success. It wasn't planned or contrived. She simply did what she enjoyed to the best of her ability. And by consistently staying at the helm of her career and dominating the games she played, instead of letting them dominate her, found herself living the proverbial dream. I feel like I started streaming and there was, it was just kind of surprise after surprise where it was like, oh, I can quit my job and, and stream video games, cool. Like, okay, oh, you want me to meet Tony Hawk? Okay, cool, weird for playing video games. This is strange, you know, I'm going to the White House, weird. Just like, you know, sorry, mini flexes. By trusting her gut when it came to making moves, Anne was essentially able to achieve the ultimate goal of content creators the world over. Find a game you love, build up your army of loyal supporters, and have them follow you wherever you choose to go. Honestly, I think that kind people surround other kind people. And if you have a positive community, then you're gonna draw in more people who want that experience on Twitch. Um, I know that there's many large communities that are just spam fests and can be kind of toxic toward the streamer and that's not necessarily a bad thing if that's what the streamer is okay with and that's what they want for their community. I personally prefer if I can have a bit more of a tight-knit community and people who like to spend time with each other and remember each other's names and, and that kind of thing. I think it's a nice feeling and it makes me excited to stream every day. And the level of respect and comfort shared between Anne and her audience has further inspired her to expand her streaming beyond just gaming. Recently, she's tried her hand at more just chatting and IRL streams too, giving a wider window into her personal life than she may have dared to years ago. At the end of the day, whether she intended to or not, Anne has become a shining example for young female gamers who are interested in giving streaming a try. She hasn't shied away from the challenge of games that are either intimidating or infuriating, and she's overcome adversity in many forms while remaining unashamedly herself, reinforcing the idea that gaming is for everyone, regardless of sex, race, or orientation. And no matter what comes her way next, if Anne's journey has taught us all anything, it's that marching to the beat of your own drum is just always the better option. One enemy remaining. 
Message sent. Cool. I killed Shroud! Yeah! Let's go. <laughs> I did things. Tim is like the only big time streamer, like big time, like top 10 Twitch that I just love. I f I love Tim. I will always love Tim. Bro, that game made you. Bro, I can't wait till the stream dies. Yeah. Can't wait. I will f say though, and maybe it, like I'll g give it give it another shake. I know everyone on Twitch is playing New World right now. This game sucks.